In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Raspberry Pi compute module to interact with electronic components using Pi4J. A Raspberry Pi compute module, this very small device, is actually a full Linux computer, but then designed to be mounted on a custom-made uh, I.O. board. So if we compare it to the normal Raspberry Pi 4, so this is the full Raspberry Pi 4, as we all know it, it has a lot of connections, network connections, USB, uh, monitors, whatever you need. Actually, this is the same hardware, so it's the same system on chip. You see it's a lot smaller if you compare the sizes, uh, but it has no connections. The connections are actually here at the back, these very small, these two black connectors. So you have to mount it onto an other board to expose all these connections. So most important fact, it is a full Raspberry Pi. So in this uh, case, I'm comparing the Raspberry Pi 4 with the compute module 4. Uh, it is the same operating system, the same software can run on it, but it has no connections. So how do you get it connected to other devices? And that's where the I.O. board comes into the picture. So this is the official Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 I.O. board. You see, we have again all these connections like uh, network, USB, DV, uh, HDMI. There are other connections for cameras and other types of displays. You have the 40 pin header like we also have on the Raspberry, full Raspberry Pi, uh, PCI Express. Uh, so everything is here. Um, and it makes this little computer, which goes here, fully accessible with all uh, the I.O. ports. Now, this is the full board designed by Raspberry Pi to do experiments. So uh, it also has some other uh, connectors, like uh, you have to add a bridge here to program the operating system to this one. And then you have a lot of uh, other of these I.O. boards. Like this is, for instance, a board created by WaveShare. Um, you see it has two network connections and then USB uh, 3 ports. So this could be an ideal board for a server or a NAS. You see you even have a battery for a real-time clock. Um, and this is only one of the many I.O. boards that are available in different shapes, different sizes, different type of connectors. And if you go a step further and you design your own board, then that means that you can use this compute module being a full Linux PC. So you don't have to build this, it exists already, but you can build your own IO board with only the connectors you need for your project. For instance, uh, if you build a digital signage system, then you are using uh, Wi-Fi, so you don't need network. Uh, but you need an HDMI connection. So you can create a little baseboard that adds the power supply uh, and the HDMI connection to your screen. And then you have your full Linux PC available um, as the heart of your digital signage system. Only one example. Now, um, I had this already uh, for a long time in my drawer, waiting to experiment with them. Uh, and I finally found some time to do that. And of course, as being one of the contributors of the Pi4J project, I wanted to try this out uh, with the Pi4J library. So run a Java application on this uh, and interact with a letter or a button, something like that. So uh, let me take this uh, stuff all to my experiment desk behind me, um, connect the thing, and let's see what we can do with it. Let's start programming the operating system on the compute module. Uh, this compute module has embedded eMMC storage. So that means that you can put the operating system on this card. You don't need an SD card, which you can put in here on the board, but we have storage on the compute module to store the operating system. So we don't need an external uh, SD card. So first thing first is we have to put this board here on the IO board. Uh, watch out with these connections. They are very small, very uh, small uh, wire, so you have to be a bit careful. We can push it on the board, so now it's connected. Now, to be able to program the operating system on this uh, board, 
we need a, a wire or a jumper on this particular place because as you can maybe read here it says a jumper to disable emmc boot so that means that uh, it will not boot from the eamc and we can put an operating system there if we follow the step by step i won't go into detail about this step by step because there is a very good explanation by jeff gearling on his website uh, with a video uh, but I'm going to do it with this other Raspberry Pi that I have here, which is a Raspberry Pi 5. And I need a USB cable between this Raspberry Pi 5 and my compute module board. So I connect it here, the other way around. Voila. So here is the project as explained on the step-by-step -step by Jeff Gerling. Uh, to have the connection between the one Raspberry Pi and the compute module. So I have made it and I can now uh, execute uh, this project. Uh, so it's like this. Um, so now it's waiting for the board to be connected. So now let's just power the board. You see it's connected, the red LED goes on and we have this wire here to make sure that the EMC doesn't boot so that it can be programmed. And now you see on the output of the Raspberry Pi, it has detected the compute module. So that means that we can go here and go to the imager and put an operating system here. So we can choose the device and the operating system, but the storage is here. So you see that this compute module uh, has eight gigs of available space to put the operating system on. So now we have the board again. The connector is uh, in place between the compute module, uh, the I.O. board, and my test setup. I removed the wire, so there's uh, no connection here anymore. And the compute board will start from the EMC. Now, if we can plug it in again, instead of only the red LED, we also have a green LED. I don't know if you can really see it in between the two uh, HDMI connectors. So this means that this board is now starting from the EEMC uh, and reading the operating system uh, there. So now let's run some Java on this. I already did some steps up front. So uh, we have SDK installed. So uh, if we would ask for the Java versions which are available here, it detects that we are running on a Linux ARM 64-bit system. So this is the version of the Raspberry Pi operating system with 64-bit. And for this version, we have a long list of Java versions available. I've installed already uh, Java 22, uh, the Zulu version with uh, Java FX uh, included. So if we ask for the Java version, it's already here, we have 22. And if we ask for Maven, it's also installed. We have the Maven 399. Uh, now let's check what is my project. So it's here in the Pi4j example project. So this is the sources of the minimal example application available at the Pi4j website, where you have an interaction with a LED and a button. Uh, I've already built it, so we can immediately go to target distribution. And there you can see uh, I'm using version 270 snapshot uh, because it contains a fix to detect this specific uh, compute module that was missing before uh, that code. So I added it in here. So Pi4j detects the type of board uh, using this command. And the code of this board is this C03141. That's the specific uh, code uh, programmed by Raspberry Pi on this board uh, as being uh, the hardware version. Now, um, let's run our code. If we go back up again, you see that based on this code, it is detected that we are executing the code on a Compute 4 board. Detected board model is a Compute Module 4. And then the thing is running. As you can see, the LED is flashing. And if we click on the button, the 
you see that the click of the button is also detected and the blink speed goes up as expected in the code. If you press it five times, the program is terminated. As you can see, the full interaction as we expected from the Pi4J code works on a compute module. If you have an IO board uh, with a 40 pin header, I also have the wave share board, so let's also try that one. So here we have the compute module installed on the wave share board. Uh, there's one big difference with the GPIO board of Raspberry Pi, and that is that the pin headers are colored. So you immediately see two pins vifold uh, where you can start counting. So we now know that we have to connect it like this. Voila. Um, the voltage, so this board expects an input voltage of between 7 and 36. So I have already a power supply of 12 volt, which is required by the Raspberry Pi board. This requires a 12 volt uh, power supply. So I can use the same one. I will also connect a screen so I can show you the output. And here you have uh, LEDs on this side. Let me show you. Here you have LEDs showing uh, if the board is powering. So let's add the power supply. LEDs are blinking, difficult to show, yeah, the LEDs are blinking, so let's wait until the board is started. Okay, and here we have the screen, so for the Raspberry Pi operating system, nothing has happened. We have the uh, same computer running, it's now mounted on a different uh, I.O. board, but uh, for the system itself, it's just running as we had it before. So we can again go to this uh, Pi4j uh, directory, go to the target distribution. So here we have the code, same code, same board, same memory, the same operating system storage because everything is on that compute module. And we can again execute the same program and we should have the blink and let again, there it is. So you see we have the same setup, a different I.O. board, but the system behaves exactly the same. Let's push the button again. So now you have the effect. So this works as expected. Although the compute module is very small, it even comes in this ridiculously small boxes. It's like a box of uh, matches. Um, it is a very powerful device because it is a full Raspberry Pi uh, 4 in this case. So you can build something very powerful with it. It is a perfect tool to build your custom hardware. You can start your proof of concept with a normal Raspberry Pi or with the compute module already and one of the existing uh, I.O. boards and then build your own uh, I.O. board only with the connections you need. Wi-Fi is already on this board if you uh, order a version with the Wi-Fi, the wireless module on it. So you don't even need to put that on your own uh, hardware I.O. board. Um, and you can build whatever you want with it. Again, it runs Java, of course. Java runs everywhere. That means it also runs the Pi4j project. So you can interact with electronic components connected to this compute module, either through the 40-pin uh, connector if you use a full I.O. board, or if you connect uh, the pins directly in your own hardware design. Have fun, hope you learned something from this video uh, and start experimenting again.